Hello everyone and welcome back. So as promised, I'm going to show you guys a tutorial for how to solo this dungeon. Uh, well, solo's mainly going to be for Eliotropes, because you guys will see how I solo it as an Eliotrope, but uh, you can also use this just as a general tutorial for the dungeon, because it's not like any regular dungeon. Uh, all the mobs are invulnerable and you don't kill them by damage. Each mob has its own particular way to kill it and we'll get into it as we see the mobs. So I'll show you uh, each room I have a specific set for. It, <laughs> I'm just a little bit tryhard in that regard. You don't really need to do that. But there are some key elements, especially in some variant choices. Not really, but just a couple of things that can uh, sort of help ease your way into it. So I have someone here. He's a fellow subscriber. He saw me put the message and he messaged me uh, trying to get the leech. So uh, hopefully he'll pay us and he gets a subscriber discount, of course. And then I'll I'll run you through and I'll show you how to... Uh, how to do this dungeon. So 2.5 million commas, fairly easy. We're at 20 mil. This character had like 1 million just yesterday. So I, ju I just made like 20 million uh, since yesterday. I've been leeching people. A lot of people message me from, from my video. So uh, now we got this going. I like to have the initiative on this first room. So I'm going to put him here. So hopefully he dies. I told him to take off all his gear so he dies quickly. That way we can uh, focus on the fight without him. So uh, my gear here has a lot of initiative because of the uh, combo of the uh, freeze hammer set here. So these two items give 1,500. And then my scrawl also gives 2,000. So I have a lot of initiative. And even though he doesn't have gear, we still have the initiative uh, as a team. So as I was saying, each mob is invulnerable. So the only way to kill them is each mob has a particular way to kill it. And the thing is, it's basically just one action that you have to do uh, five, uh, five turns in a row. So I'll tell you about them. My first turn, I always just do this. I try to get maximum distance. I'll do this, put a portal, boom, boom, and then I'll block all the portals. So over here, you have the patho germ. The patho germ is one of the more complicated ones. We'll say sure. So I guess he wants to leech two characters after this. So that's another 5 million camas for us. Fairly nice. So the patho germ is one of the more complicated ones. Uh, the patho germ, you have to uh, hit it with every element every turn for five turns in a row, and then he'll die. So I can't really do that, which is why you'll see here, I use the following weapon. I use the IOTS wand, which hits in all the elements. So if I hit him with my wand five turns in a row, he will die. So now, although all the mobs are invulnerable, here's the here's a particularity to the dungeon. They summon this thing here, which every two turns will explode and kill your character and kill all the characters, right? Uh, it sacrifices all the mobs though. So they're invulnerable, but the thing takes the damage for them. So we're going to do this. We're just going to get as far away as we can as possible. Like so. And I'm going to come here. So uh, this thing takes all the damage for them right here. And so uh, any mob that I hit, it's going to it's going to take the damage. And every two turns, so now it's its turn. Now next turn, if it's still alive, it's going to one-shot me and we lose the fight. So the only way for me to win the fight is I have to do about 1,000 damage a turn. It has 2,000 damage per person who's alive, which is why I ask for my leechers to have no gear so that they can die quickly. Because if they were here, it'd have 4,000 HP as opposed to 2,000. So uh, as long as I hit 1,000 per turn, I'm good. And every offense does about 560, so that's uh, that's quite enough. So as I said, the patho germ needs to be uh, hit with every element every turn for five turns in a row, and it'll die. Now the bachelors. It's fairly simple. You just have to not heal yourself for five turns in a row. If you don't heal yourself for five turns in a row, they'll die. And then you also have here, you have the uh, Viring or Viring. So you can see here the Bachelors. The Viring, you just have to not move it for five turns in a row or teleport or anything. Now, unfortunately, the Bachelors, one of their spells is to teleport allies. So it keeps resetting the, uh, the Viring's uh, cooldown, let's say. So as soon as the Bachelors uh, Bachelors or whatever they die will be okay to uh, to continue here. So I'm just going to start setting up portals here, putting them a little bit to the center, and I'll show you a little technique that I do. So we're going to do this here, boom, boom. We did our two offenses every turn, so I have to do two offenses every turn, or I could hit with Corrupted Bow, but I don't have my Corrupted Bow in this room because uh, there's a Patho Germ. Although in the boss room is the only one where there's no Patho Germ, so you'll see me use it there. So we're almost at turn five, they die at turn six. So at turn six, 
the two basilisks will die, and then they'll stop co-oping uh, the Viring over here, and then he will die uh, five turns after that. So I just got to keep doing this, and this part's fairly easy. I'm just going to wait the basilisks out. So we're just going to do this and keep passing. All right, so as you can see, the basilisks have died. It's, it's really quite simple as long as you are able to avoid the mobs and as long as you're able to deal that 1k damage a turn. So any class with good enough mobility should be able to do this. Uh, like SRAMs, Rogues, I don't know, even whatever whatever you guys can think of that has good mobility should be able to do this. Uh, now the problem is, for example, uh, this guy will has a lot of MP, so you can't just play as a craw, for example, and try push them back. That's not really going to work because then you're just going to because uh, if you push this guy back, he won't die, because he dies only if you don't push him for 5 turns. That's his thing. So I'm just doing my 2 offenses a turn, and we're going to come here and pass again. It's uh, it's fairly simple. As Eliotrope, once I have my portal split like this, I just don't get hit, right? So all I have to do is offense, offense, come in my portal, close everything, boom, come here. And then we're just going to wait for this Varying to die, and then I'll show you how I how I work on the Patho Germ here. So we're just going to keep going. <laughs> All right, so now I haven't pushed the Viring for five turns. It's now dead. Now I just have to handle the Patho Germ. Uh, should be should be simple enough. The Patho Germ can hit you at six range. Now its damage base its base damage is really bad until you hit it. So once you've hit it with all the elements, you've activated something in it, and it starts to do more damage. So I like to set up my portals in this way because then I can get close to hit hit with it. And then I'll go in this one, and this one will redirect over here, and it'll take me down over here. So I'll go through this portal, and it'll take me all the way over here, and that way I can just boost myself again, and block everything again. And 6 range, so that hits here maximum, so I can just stay where I am. So he won't be able to hit me. He also has a second attack that has uh, 3 range, by the way. So as I was saying, I can come here, just hit. And we're just going to have to hit him with that with that weapon every turn because it hits with all the elements. And then after five turns, he's just going to die. All right, so he's almost dead here. Uh, he should die next turn, I think. Yeah, he should probably die on his turn. I'm just going to hit him for good measure, but I actually don't really have to. Uh, but yeah, so basically, it's very easy. As long as you can avoid the mobs, the Bachelors will die. The Viring will die by themselves. The Pathogerm is the only one you actually have to do something for. The rest, as long as you can avoid the mobs, you'll be fine. And then you just got to keep dealing your 1k damage per turn. And that's pretty easy for the room one. So as soon as he dies now, we're just going to move on to room two. Let's keep going. All right, here we go. So room two, I have a little bit more HP in my room two. Uh, in my set for the room two. And we have two new mobs here. We have the Bacterable and we also have the uh, Verminoculate. So I'll show you what they do. As usual, we're just going to do offense, offense. I'm going to put a portal here. I'm going to run like this. Put a portal down here. It doesn't really matter where you put the portals. I just want to have one that's far away and one that's a little bit closer to me. Uh, like so, this is fine. Uh, the Bacterables and the Renoculates are the new mobs here. So I'm going to explain how they die. The Bacterable, basically, you can't let it start its turn within six range of you. So it's very easy as an Elotrope. As long as you stay far away, it's yet another mob that's just going to die. So I'm just going to split my portals here, do my, my offense times two again, get one portal all the way over there, coalition, and then uh, interruption here. So yeah, as long as they stay far away from these Bacterables, uh, I should be fine because they just can't start their turn within six range of me. The Verminoculate is a little bit annoying, so we're actually going to leave him for last. As soon as I get to him, then you'll, you'll see. I'm just going to accelerate the rest of the fight until he's the only one who's left because every other mob you guys now hopefully understand uh, how to kill it. So you just want to split your portals, keep going from one side to the other, offense, coalition, uh, keep blocking your portals, and you should be pretty safe as an Eliotrope. Now, as any other class, you're going to have to find your other method, but as an Eliotrope, especially intelligence Eliotrope with really good range, this room uh, goes by pretty easily. So we'll just wait until I get the Verminoculate by itself. All right, five turns have gone by. The Bacterables have gone. Now I got to start working on my Patho Germ. So the way that I like to split my portals is to have two that are kind of close and then two that are kind of close to each other that's far away. That way I can come close like this, for example. I can come close here, right? So I'll show you an example. Come like this. I can hit with this. Boom. And then I can go in this portal and pop out the other side. Now, uh, I would like to hit with a virus, but then 
he would come out one, two, three, four. Actually, yeah, that's fine. I can hit with virus. That way I can take a nice zone and I'll pop out over here. Now, even if he takes portal, because I can't interruption, he's still going to come out here and he won't have the MP to hit me or will he? One, two, three, four. No, he'll come out here. And since he has six range, he can only hit till here, but I'm over here. So he won't be able to hit me. So I just got to keep hitting him with the weapon every turn and we should be okay. <laughs> All right, so the pathogerm is done, and now I can teach you about this verminoculate. It's actually very easy. So when you got only one by itself, it's one of the one of the easier mobs to actually get rid of. So what I like to do is very simple. If I just got it by itself, you're gonna do this, get close. So let me explain real quick. The way that you kill a verminoculate is you gotta end next to it five turns in a row. So that's just the thing. So you gotta get close, and that's why I have more HP, more resistance, because it's gonna hit me in close combat. So I like to put my portals like this, that way I can just do uh, Wakfu, Wakfu Ray over here. And that way I heal myself with Wakfu Ray, and I hit at the same time. So you're gonna see he's just gonna hit me. He does pretty decent damage. Uh, next next uh, room, there's gonna be two of them, and I'll show you how you deal with two of them. So I just do this, put my portals all the way here, and the redirection go just goes boom, boom, and then all the way back there. And I hit him while healing, and I stay pretty much full HP. When there's just one, it's very simple. And I just need to do two Wakfu Rays a turn, and the, uh, I'll be doing my 1k damage a turn, right? So as long as I'm doing my 1k damage, I'm fine. And I am keep healing, so I'm just going to do this for a few turns till he dies. All right. And that's another one down. So that was room two. So each room has two of one type of uh, mob. And they're kind of the thing that you have to deal with because there's two of them. So uh, I like to, you know, base my set around them. So now we're going to go room three. Uh, my room three set is uh, a little bit more uh, more worked because basically the issue with this is that there's two of them. So I have to tank two of, uh, two of them in close combat. Now I don't have to tank them at the same time, which I obviously won't, which is basically how I'm going to win this fight. I'll show you the technique. But I do inclu include a Dococo in my set. I think it's very important to have the Coco. And uh, if you pay attention, they actually hit in the neutral and chance elements. So as much as you want, you can, uh, you should be able to stack neutral and chance resistances. So I'm using my Croco belt. Uh, the, these boots give me neutral res. This hat gives me neutral and water resistance. It's the stub beard from the freeze hammer set. So that's quite perfect. Uh, in terms of variants, it's very important that you play contraction and the same thing, Wafu Ray and everything. Uh, switch this one to healing. There we go. So uh, that's pretty pretty well set. Now let me show you how I tend to do this room. So I'm going to switch him over here. I'm going to bring myself over here. One, two, three, four, five. No, I'm going to come over here because as I said, he has a second attack that's from three range. And it does MP reduction and stuff. I don't want to take it. His, his long range, six range attack doesn't do any damage really. It does like minus 60 or something until you hit him with, uh, until I hit him with my weapon. So until then, I'm fine. So he's since he plays before me, he's going to kill him, and then he's going to come hit me with that long range one. You're going to see he's going to do, what is that, 53. That's nothing. So the way that I'm going to have to do this room is I'm going to hit him. I'm going to have to put a portal somewhere kind of far. So I know I'm going to want to put it around down there, but I'm also going to have to hit him pretty hard. Otherwise, I'm going to have problems. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so since I'm hitting with my weapon and it doesn't hit a lot, I still need to hit 1k a turn, about approximately 1k a turn. So luckily with offense and leak pie, I'm able to cover that gap. Now if I put this here, then you can see that this guy is going to go here and he'll end up blocking my portal, which is quite, which is okay because I'm still going to be running back and then he'll unblock it next turn. So you know what, it's actually quite all right that I do this and then I can just keep running back in this direction. So uh, let's do, let's go here like this. This seems okay. Actually, let's just go here. So we got two uh, verminoculates. There's no new monster here, but I, it's a new technique. So I'm going to show you guys how I deal with uh, with this room. So I always want to go for the pathogerm first. And remember, the varying, as long as I don't push it, it will die. So uh, I'm kind of focusing the pathogerm, and then the rest of the mobs, uh, and then this guy will probably die with him if I hit, as long as I'm successful in hitting the pathogerm every turn. So it should be quite all right, as long as I'm able to kill it. So I need to do another, what, 770 damage. So this plus leak pie should be enough and if not i have another leak pie but it is enough so i can do uh, another portal 
somewhere here like this, and then I'll block the portal, and I'll just run all the way back here. So now he has just enough range to hit here, which is uh, three, so he can't hit me with his second spell, so we're still good. So I'm going to have to hit him with bow, and uh, a big tip I have for you guys is to use virus when you can, because then for four AP you can do the damage of uh, some something that would hit a lot less. So you can see here, I can do this, boom, and then I can come here, take a nice virus zone, that way for 4 AP I did a lot of the damage, that way next turn I don't have to worry about doing as much damage. So I can go through the portal here, and block it, and while I'm here, let's see, so I can put another portal, how about all the way up uh, there, no let's not go too far, let's go about here. This seems okay. So now the Verminoculate, the way it hits, it can either hit uh, from 3 range, it can pull you in and then hit you, or it can just hit you in close combat. So while I'm here, it can't come here to really pull me, although I think it can pull me diagonally. Yeah, it can pull diagonally, but it's not that big of a deal. And then uh, you can see here, it's not really much damage. And then other than that, you can also it can also do, a, um, what is it called? Uh, close combat damage, which is pretty heavy. So now I have to be sure to hit the Patho Germ again. Luckily, I had did a lot of damage last turn, so I don't have to worry about doing too much damage. So I'm just going to actually move the Verminoculate so I can come here and get uh, one of my boat, one of my hits in like that. And then I can actually, uh, I just have to be sure to finish the uh, the Mala, Mala Moeba. So I'm going to hit it with Wakfu Ray, go through here, block portals. And uh, the Veering, I didn't mention yet, but it hits either in close combat or from three range. The three range hit hits like nothing. You'll see 184, that's not much. But the close combat hit hits a lot. So you want to avoid going close combat with this guy as much as you can. Uh, thankfully, it's almost turn six when... Uh, when the Pathogerm and the Veering will both die, and then I can show you guys how I deal with the uh, Verminoculates. So I'm going to have to hit him again. I have a nice zone for Virus here. can go through again. It's very easy, very easy. With Elytrope, it's, it's really not that difficult. So now I can come here, make sure I don't get hit by either of them. Come here like this, this seems okay. And we're just going to pass. Alright, and boom. So now it's turn 6, they have died. And now I'll show you my technique for dealing with both of these guys at the same time. So they died, so the Malo Moeba, which was summoned by the Varing, because he played after me, actually also died. Because when I kill the Varing, the next, the next mob will summon it. So what I like to do is I'll actually show you. So I'll put a portal as far as I can, block all the portals, heal, heal. Uh, do I have coalition done? I do have it done. So what I'm just going to do is come here. And I'm actually going to attract this guy. So now this guy is the one who I'm going to keep close to me. And this guy, as soon as he comes close to me, I'm just going to do contraction. And he's going to be sent all the way back down here. And you'll see, it's, it'll be very easy. So I'm just going to do contraction. He's going to pop all the way down there. Thankfully, you see, he hit me, but Dokoko. Dokoko is pretty useful on this room. You can't use Dokoko on rooms where the Bachelor is, because otherwise you'll be healing yourself and the Bachelor will never die. So i got to remember to interruption. Now he's on the other side. Now by the time he gets me, uh, this guy's five turns will be almost up, and if I need to, I can just contraction again because he, he won't get to me before I'm able to uh, recover my cooldown. So we're just going to uh, keep hitting him, keep healing, and then wait for that second guy to come close. Uh, also, pro tip. So once it says that he only has one turn left, that means uh, that it says kills the target in one turn, it means I don't have to end next to him anymore. So now this turn, I don't need to end next to him anymore. I just have to kill the Malamueba. So we're just going to do that. Boom, boom. And then I can just go through here. And then I don't have to finish next to him again, because on his turn, he's just going to die. So we are quite all right. So let's do this, this, and let's come back towards this guy. Because next turn, we're just going to set up our Wakfu Ray setup again. And then uh, since he's dead, we should be okay. So boom, he's dead. Now we got this guy. We're just going to do very unskilled Elytro plays here. We're going to Interruption. Put this portal here, put this portal here, and then Wakfu Ray, and you can see that it's pretty much a guaranteed win here. Uh, now, another trick that you can use to tank the Verminoculates is you can put a summon behind you. So if I were to put my uh, my totem anywhere near me, so I'll show you. I'll, I'll actually do it. Normally I wouldn't, but I'm just going to do it for show here. Normally I would just keep spamming this, right? And that would be sufficient, but uh, just to show you guys for the sake of uh, demonstration, so you see how he hits me twice every turn. But if I were to put the totem behind me like this, what he's actually going to do is hit me once, and then he's going to go and hit my totem with his bigger hit. So I took 450, and then my totem took the rest of the damage. So it actually helps you to tank uh, quite, uh, quite significantly.
All right, and that's the third room down. So now we got to move on to the fourth room. Uh, the fourth room has two pathogerms. So that's the particularity of this room. So we're going to uh, switch to our room four set. Our room four set, just again, including the wand. And there's nothing special to it, just a, a lot of initiative, uh, some HP. And it's just okay, it's just just regular set. Nothing nothing is really necessary on this room. So I'm just going to make sure I got the right variants and stuff. So we're going to replace that with healing. And let's keep going here. Uh, so we want him to die. Uh, luckily, the bacteria bulk hits at pretty good range. So I'm just going to start here. And let's just keep going. So no new mobs here. A very ink, remember, just a quick reminder, just don't move it for five turns. Bacterable, don't end next to it for five turns. And then the pathogerms are the guys who we're going to have to play with a little bit. So what I'm going to do is this, this. So as you can see, the Mala Moeba right now has 4k HP to start with. But as soon as he dies, it will go away. So I'm not worried because I know he's going to die right on his turn. So I just got to do this. Boom, I'm going to come here. And I'm just getting ready to split my portals. <laughs> nice clown face. I'm just getting ready to split my portals all the way up there somewhere. And we should be okay. So we're just going to work on that. I'll accelerate the fight a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually preparing something for later for the pathogerms. So I'm setting up my portals in this way. And you'll understand uh, soon enough. But I set up my portals in this way because... Uh, just for now, I'm going to tell you uh, what's the important key point is that this portal here will connect to this one and then this one. And uh, also these are five range apart. So those two key points, I'll explain them later. But it's important that I put this portal here because it connects. Uh, so if you look at the intersection, right? So it goes here and then all the way down here. And then this one's two away. Sorry. Then this one's two and then this one's three. So uh, it's important for me to put my portals in, in this way for now, and you'll understand soon enough. So we're just going to have to do our two offenses, and let's keep going here. All right, so next turn. Now we're turn five. So turn six, this guy and this guy, they're both going to die. So now I'm going to start setting up uh, my portals to be able to get rid of these pathogerms. So the best way to deal with the pathogerms is set up your portals in a way that, remember I was showing you. So now I come through here. I'm going to come all the way down here. I'm going to put my portal six away from here. And I'm just, do I have coalition on me? I don't, so I can do it. And then I'm going to interruption. And so the benefit of doing this, you can see that these are five away from each other, but these are six away from each other. So right now I'm going to put another portal five away from this one and it'll set up my, my positioning and you'll understand why I did it the way that I did it. So now that they're dead, I got to start working on these pathogerms. Uh, for now I can... Actually, yeah, I can definitely start working on this guy. So uh, since this guy's closer, we're just going to start hitting him like that. And I'm going to do virus, kill the thing. And I'm going to put this five away. So we're going to do here. And now our setup should be complete. So boom. So the interest, the point of this setup is basically uh, I could come through this portal and it'll take me out the other one. And if I come through this one, it'll take me out here because it connects five here and it's six in between. So I can actually just come through here, uh, coalition and block it off. And I can go here. And I don't care if this guy hits me because I haven't hit him with a wand, so his damage is not significant at all. So you'll see it's going to be like minus whatever, minus 78. But this guy I've hit with a wand, so this this is the one that I really want to try and avoid for now. So yeah, so the interest of doing my portals like this is because now I can come here, hit him, and then I can still come in through this portal and pop out the other side. So I can do this, boom. I can do, uh, let's see, so Wakfu Ray, uh, Virus, and then I can come through and block it off. Now he will still be able to reach me. I can, uh, if I end here, he'll be able to reach me with both spells. The one that's 6 range and the one that's 3, so I'm going to move one away. Uh, he'll still do pretty good damage with his 6 range spell, you'll see. Minus 545, but it's alright. It's bearable. We have a lot of HP and he should be dead not too long from now. So we're going to hit him again. And now uh, Leak Pie will finish that. And I can just come through here. This. This. And then I can heal. So it's not that big, big of a deal. Uh, they're not too difficult to deal with, especially once you have your portal set up. You just don't want to be hit with that 3 range one, because that does MP reduction and pretty good damage. So you can see here, he's 1, 2, 3, uh, and 4 towards me, right? So that's far enough that I'm not too worried. So I can just do this, and uh, let's just keep working on these. Uh, on this one. We'll do them one at a time. So once this one's done, we'll start working on the next one.
All right, so that was it for the fourth room. Uh, we're now, you can see here, got the big protozoar here. Uh, we're at the bus room. But I showed you how to get to here, so I'm sure you can figure this one out. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Bye. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. So I'm actually going to show you how to do this, uh, this boss. So uh, this is the only one where the gear actually truly matters. So you got a few things that you're going to want on your gear. One, you're going to want to have as much range as possible. Now, I play with my intelligence uh, set and has pretty good range. Uh, I can hit from really far with offense. Now, if you were playing any other build of Eliotrope, for example, Strength, you'd be okay. Uh, agility, I, there's not really many range spells with Agility, but I think you can get by using... Uh, what is that spell? Uh, it's the variant of Insult, so Contempt. Because you have 1 to 7, and then it's a line of 3, so I think you can hit up to 9 or a 10 range. So that one's okay. you got to make sure you have your Corrupted Bow, because sometimes that can help you, since... Uh, dealing 1k damage us usually is offense times 2, which is AAP, but if you just use Corrupted, then it's just uh, it's just the uh, uh, 5 AP. Now we're ready to go. Everything's good. Our variants are good. You want to use Contraction, all your healing stuff. <laughs> yeah, leeching more people. So let's go. Uh, let's start this fight, and I'll show you how it rolls. So no new mobs over here. Uh, you got the Verminoculate, Viring. Bachelus and Protozoar. You can't use a Dococo. Well, let's tell this guy good luck. You can't use a Dococo because there's the Bachelus, and if, uh, as I said, if you use a Dococo versus a Bachelus, you're just going to end up uh, losing because you can't kill the Bachelus, right? Uh, so we have all our variants in place. We got him in place, and the Protozoar hits pretty hard in line, and he has pretty de decent range. He has 5 MP, so he's going to go about here, and from here, I don't think he can hit me, hit me. I'm not sure. I don't know his exact range. You guys can look that up if you want on uh, on uh, Defensive. That's like the, the website for the mobs and stuff. But uh, as it stands, I think we are we should be okay. Even if he hits me, he doesn't hit that, that hard. So let's see. So he's going to hit him. Will he hit me? No. So he can't hit me. Now, there's a few things to note here. Uh, first thing is that if you hit the Protozoar in line, you're going to attract him. So you're going to see I'm not in line with him. My line's over here, and he's off to the side. Uh, we're going to need to exploit that hitting in line thing, but later on. For now, I'm just going to do this. Put a portal. I'm going to hit him offense times two. Hit a portal. Come all the way over here, and I do all my fights like this. doesn't matter their positioning. And I'm going to block here. Now, sometimes it can get annoying, because sometimes they can start to block the way. Because this next turn, I'm going to start to want to put portals down here all the way down there there in that direction. So if they block it, it's going to be a bit annoying, but I've always managed to figure it out. So uh, since he's going to swap, might work. So as you can see here, uh, I'm blocked from uh, from putting portals down straight like that. So I'm going to have to come in and put the portals sideways like this. And it's it's unideal, but it's okay. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it still works, so we're quite all right. So I'm going to put another portal. Boom. Uh, kill the Malam Ueba. And you know what? I think I'm just going to leave the portals open because uh, hopefully the Bachelors will come out through there and he won't be able to hit me, but I want to get him away from that corner because I know I want to go there next turn. So let's let him come through the portals. All right, so as you can see, the Protozoar just hit me with his first hit. It doesn't do that much damage, but every time he hits you, it gets boosted and that's an infinite boost. So this is where I'm going to be using Corrupted Bow because it's important. Uh, since for 5 AP, I can do the same damage as 8 AP, it can help save me some AP. So I'm going to do that, put another one here, boom. We're going to run all the way down here, set, set our second portal. I'm going to coalition since I didn't do it last turn, and now I get 1 AP interruption. And basically how it's going to work is since he only hits in line, I'm just going to come here, and then pop out there, and then pop out here, and then pop out there. And we're basically just waiting out the Bachelors, and then we're just going to wait out the Viring. So the first phase of the fight is waiting out the Bachelors. So we're just going to keep hitting like this come through. We're going to put our second portal down there, and I can't heal myself during this phase because we still got the Bachelors and we're waiting to get rid of him. So I'm going to accelerate this part. All right, so the Bachelors just died because we didn't heal ourselves for five turns. Now we just got to wait out the Viring. We got to not push anyone. Uh, no, we can push people. We just can't push the Viring. So we just got to not push the Viring for five turns. So that's phase two of the fight.
All right, so now uh, we're getting close to the turn where the Viring is going to die. So I'm going to start fixing my portals. What I want is two portals next to each other. And I want two portals next to each other down here. And I'll show you the benefit of uh, setting up your portals in that way soon enough. So I'm just going to do this. Boom. And uh, now we got these two over here, three and four. So now we're going to have to put the one and two down there. Uh, I, I don't really want them to be one and two, but it doesn't really, really matter. So uh, I'll show you. So we're just going to do this. Uh, put our second portal down there. That seems OK. And then I'm going to make sure to be hitting my 1K every turn. So we're going to do this. Boom, boom. And I'm actually just going to come through the portal again. I'm going to block it. And I'm going to pull the uh, the verminoculate because I want the verminoculate to be close to me because I'm going to have to start uh, unlocking him, right? Start going to have to kill. We get, we're going to leave the protozoar till last. Uh, now I could kill the protozoar first and then kill the verminoculate. Doesn't really matter, but I prefer to just have the protozoar last because it just makes more sense in my head. So uh, remember, the protozoar can only hit in line. So here, uh, the line is there, so we're quite all right. All right, so perfect. So now this guy's dead. Uh, now we just got to uh, start working on this verminoculate here. So the way that I'm going to handle him is basically I want to send him to one side of the map and then I want to follow him. So for me to do so right now, let me see here. So I can put a portal through here and this is where it's a little bit of a freestyle, but you want to have some portals next to each other. So I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to hit him like that. Oh, and see, that's where uh, that's where we got that. So hold on, we're going to have to do this. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go through there. Let's go through there. No. Ah, shit. So this is where we fucked up. All right. So we kind of fucked up here, and we're gonna we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna regret that decision. We're gonna regret that uh, this moment for uh, for quite a while here. But I think I can still heal up and fix this. Uh, the reason I fucked up is that I forgot that if I hit him, he'll get attracted in line, and that's uh, that's what messed me up here. But it should be all right because I can, I still got my portals nice and far away and I can still go through here and I can still heal myself. And there's no rush. Uh, the way that you are going to have to kill the protozoar is doing this 10 turn uh, cycle. And as long as you start that 10 turn cycle before turn uh, 30, then you should be okay because obviously you got, uh, you got 40 turns to do duo. So as long as I'm doing my damage, as long as I'm, uh, I keep healing, as long as I start my cycle before turn uh, 30, I should be okay. So I'm just going to heal here and try and recover. Uh, I did lose a little bit of HP because of erosion and stuff, but in the end of the day, it's quite okay because I'll just be able to heal it right back. All right, here we go. So we're almost full HP and we can start to do uh, the, the verminoculate unlock. So I actually left this portal open because if you leave a portal open away from you and one close to you, the verminoculate can also choose to, mobs can sometimes choose to actually go through the portal to try and hit you because uh, it's closer there. So for example, if he was here and I'm all the way here, but this portal's open, he's like, oh shit, I can go through the portal and I'll reach him a lot faster than if I try to run after him. So uh, thankfully I can do that and I'm free to leave portals open because if you could look at the protozoar, he's in the rooted state or the unmovable state. So he can't actually go through portals, which is quite interesting for me. So I can always leave portals open and I do quite all right like that. So now I'm going to come to his close combat or his uh, his melee or whatever. And now we got to start passing for five turns next to this guy. It's also worth noting that every time you get hit, you put a glyph under you. So you can see here, there's this purple glyph. If I step on it, I'll take uh, pretty good damage. The same damage approximately as the, uh, the linear hit that the protozoar does. So if I can, I want to avoid that just because why would I want to take free damage, right? So now he's going to keep hitting me. Uh, the protozoar is starting to get close. So he can't hit me yet if I end here just because he doesn't have a line since the Malamoeba is blocking him. So I'm actually going to opt to stay here. But if I can't, if I, I can't go off my cell and then come back on it, because if I do that, then I will end up uh, getting uh, taking the damage. So I'm just going to hit him as much as I can from here without moving. I could hit the Malamoiba, but if you hit it directly, it reduces 50% damage. So it's much more worth it to hit the uh, the mobs instead. All right, here we go. So now uh, the Verminoculate is a little bit uh, too close to the Protozoar, so I'm going to have to separate them. So it's very easy. I'm just going to do Contraction. It'll, it'll place a portal under him, teleport other side. We're just going to put this here. And now I can just do Hit, Hit, come behind him. 
and block this all off. And we are quite all right safe here because he can't hit me. Uh, he's almost dead. How many turns does he have left? Let's check. So yeah, next turn, I don't even have to finish next turn. So now we can start working on uh, setting us up for the, uh, for the boss. So for the boss, you're going to want to do a very specific setup. And it's just the best way to do it. The setup is going to be the following. So you're going to put two portals down here. Now who plays after me? So okay, he's going to die on his turn, so the Malamoeba is going to disappear since it's a summon of the pro of the uh, Verminoculate, so I don't even have to hit him. So I'm quite alright just working like this, just healing, uh, trying to catch my breath, get some HP back. I don't really have to worry about hitting him just because he's going to die on his turn and the Malamoeba is going to die. So the setup that you're going to want to do is this. He dies, boom, we're good. You're going to put the two portals down there. I'm going to make sure to hit him twice. Okay, and then you're going to want to put, come through here, and you're going to put a portal like this and a portal here, exactly exactly where I, I am putting them. So now what this is going to do is, uh, I'll show you in a moment, but for now, let's see here. Uh, let me see, because I, I want to try and avoid his damage a little bit, so I'm thinking, if I can't, no, there's nowhere I can go that'll actually make me avoid his damage. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to come here. And we're going to heal ourselves, and we're going to end up taking his damage, but it's going to be okay, because I'll show you, it's going to set us up for uh, for some turns later. So now I can't really hit him, I'm just going to have to go here. Uh, basically, now you're going to have to wait and keep running around. You want to kill the Malamueba when the Protozoar is approximately in, like, this, in this region here. And I'll show you why in a moment. But for now, uh, let's just keep passing and stuff until we figure out how to, uh, how to do that. So it's not that difficult. You'll see. It'll probably work out in a turn or two. And this is, uh, this is sufficient, because he just needs to be able to hit me when I place myself here. So now I can kill him, I mean kill the Malamoeba, and then I can go through here, boost my, my AP, and from here I can just boost Coalition or whatever I want, doesn't really matter. And now he's going to come, and he's going to hit me, and we're going to get it on. So I'll show you. So he's going to hit me. Remember, if I hit him in line, he's going to get attracted all the way to me. And the way that you make the Protozoar vulnerable is by putting him on this glyph. And for me to put him on this glyph, I just have to hit him. So uh, that's the bonus of having this much range. So he's going to get uh, vomped. I can't hit him in line, right? Or I'll attract him onto the portal. So I'm going to hit him, get get him attracted to the portal. I'm going to do this. Hit him again. And the Malamoeba is taking the damage all that time. And then I'm just going to go through the portal and go here. He's going to run. He's going to get blocked there. Sometimes he gets blocked. Sometimes he runs further. It doesn't really matter. If he runs further, I'll hit him like this. And if he gets blocked, then I'll just hit him through here like this. So it's going to kill the Malamueba, attract him all the way to me. And here I'm just going to boost my AP. I'm going to do Coalition, healing if I need it. Right now I'm full HP, so it doesn't really change anything. So I can just go through here, boom, and you come back here. And you're going to see it's going to be an infinite loop. So he's going to hit me. Actually, there's still one more turn for me to show you. So he's going to pull me. I'm going to walk back in this portal. I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit him again with Lazy Beam. I'm going to hit him with Leak Pie. And then I'm going to exit this over him to go through this portal. And I'm just going to pass again. And this is where it becomes the infinite loop. So you guys remember this. I'm just going to have to come here. Pull him next to me. And it's important to have a little bit of dodge. That's why I play with Ebony Dofus. Because I need to be able to go through here. And then go back out through there. Otherwise, I, if I wanted to, I could do Convulsion on myself to unlock myself. But I don't really recommend that. So we're going to do this. Boom. Uh, boost my AP this and we're just going to keep doing this until he dies because the goal is to make to do this turn a couple times and he'll die because uh the way that you kill the protozoar is by making him in this state for 10 turns in a row so uh we started before the turn uh 30 so we are quite all right here we just got to keep doing this and then he will end up dying So he was like, are you going to get it before uh, turny, uh, before turn 40? The answer is yes. Uh, we both dropped a Protozoar Nucleus. So it's turn 38. Uh, 
you know, normally I would finish it a lot faster. I'd finish it usually in about eight minutes and usually a lot less turn. We did fail that one turn. That happens like maybe once every 20 fights or so. It's very rare for that to happen to me. I'm gonna say no problem, have a good day. Uh, so that that's it, that's my tutorial. I hope that my explanations were adequate. He just got his duo achievement. He got my, uh, he got his uh, dungeon achievement, about 4.5 million commas worth of resources. So he seems to appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate him paying me the 2.5 million commas and I'm happy to help out the uh, my fellow subscribers with the little subscriber discount there. If you guys want, you can always hit me up in game. This is me, Defy V, or I might be on my Rogue, uh, Defy X. I'm always happy to help out you guys. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comments. Uh, good luck trying it if you're an LU trope. And uh, if you're successful, also let me know. I'm happy to hear it. Have a good day, guys. Take care of yourselves and bye.